in this video, I'm drawing a really big map. So lately I've been working on some really small artwork, pixel artwork, you know, drawing stuff one little pixel at a time. And I thought I needed a break from working small, so I'm gonna work really big. So I've got this huge sheet of paper, some nice thick paint markers, and I thought it would be fun to bring you along on the process of just having fun drawing a big old fantasy world map. Before I jump into actually drawing this map, I always like to start with a key or at least sketching around on a sheet of paper with the tools I'll be using and figuring out how I'm going to actually illustrate each element of the map. Now I want you to pay close attention to how I'm drawing each of these elements. It's really, really simple. And I say it all the time, if you can write the alphabet, you can draw a map like the one I'm drawing in this video. I know that all drawing is not simple. You know, drawing horses is really hard and spiral staircases is really difficult, but drawing fantasy maps like this is really, really easy. It just takes a little bit of time and patience but really no actual drawing ability because really all we're doing is repeating these simple, simple drawings over and over again to fill up the drawing and create an illustrated map. So you can see that on this separate sheet of paper, I'm planning out how I'll be drawing mountains and forest, hills, swamplands and the desert, farmlands and rivers and coastlines. It's all very, very simple drawing. Mountains are just a triangle without the bottom. Hills are just little lumps. Forests are the squiggly lines, almost like clouds with little trunks, single lines sticking out of the bottom. The deserts are just dots, like literally just dots over and over again. And I am gonna be adding some different kind of areas like this sort of misty area. It's just like these winding squiggles and a fire area, like a, a place that's on fire all the time. And those are just exaggerated wave shapes with a little bits of sparks coming off. For this map, I'm keeping things really, really simple. So a town is just a filled in circle. A fort is a, a little battlement, like a couple little squares with uh, a tower underneath. A city is just a star. A dungeon is just a filled in archway and roads are just a dashed line. Oh, and for the story of this map, I'm also doing some elevated cliffs. I get a lot of questions about how to draw elevation and stuff. This is kind of my method where you draw like the top line and then have some vertical lines coming down. Okay, now that I've figured out all of my elements, all of my icons that I'm gonna be repeating over and over again on the map, I'm gonna get a fresh sheet of paper out. And just because I'm drawing on this big piece of paper doesn't mean you can't just draw on a normal size sheet of paper. I'm just having a little bit of extra fun for this video. Okay, now I'm still not quite confident enough to jump straight into the map, so I'm using a pencil to figure out the basic layout of this map. Now I'm just drawing in the coastline and placing a few mountains and rivers and lakes just to get a general idea of where this stuff is gonna go, but you might find that you need to do a little bit more planning, especially if you have your fantasy world already written out. It might be worth taking a little bit of extra time to pencil out the locations in a little bit more detail. So you might need to do a little bit more planning, but I'm gonna jump straight into this drawing now. So I'm starting things off with my big old PC7M Posca marker. I love this thing. It's a big fat bullet tip paint pen, so it's really, really fun and smooth to draw with. And I'm gonna be using this marker to draw the coastlines or the outlines of these two continents. And using a thicker line like this is really for clarity, just to make it extra, extra clear where the, the land stops and the water begins. Now for the rest of the drawing, I'm gonna be using the PC3 3M, also bullet tip shaped Posca marker. This is like the regular size Posca marker that you can get. So I guess at this point I should say that the tools really don't matter. I'm using these Posca markers because I think they're fun to draw with, but you can totally use a Sharpie, really cheap Crayola markers, colored pencils, crayons, whatever you want to draw your map. It'll look awesome. So I usually start with the biggest and most important locations first. So 
mountains, rivers, and lakes are sort of the big things. And then I'm also drawing in where the cities and towns are gonna be located. And I'm connecting some of these important locations with the dashed line roads because I'll be drawing some of the other elements, the forests and the hills and the, the grassland areas around these bigger and more important locations. So like I said, I haven't named any of these places or what even this, this world is called. I'm just making it up as I go along. And I had this idea that there was a continent that was somehow split in half from some great force. Maybe it was a god or some evil wizard that split the world in half and the people of the world all got together, defeated this god or evil wizard, whoever it is, and brought about peace. But then eventually as time went on, the people in the north and the people in the south started fighting. And you know, they built this big bridge that spanned the lightning bolt gap between the two continents. But as the war went on, they destroyed it and the northern continent got all messed up. And the southern part of the continent has way more gold and has way more opportunities. So that creates all this conflict with the northern part of the continent. And that's my idea for how to make this place in an interesting world to explore. Now at this point, I'm just filling up the map with details. Well, not details necessarily, but I'm just filling up the map with these icons, these shapes that indicate these different terrain types. And if you did the first step where you figured out how you're gonna draw each of these elements, filling up the map with them becomes really, really easy and really, really fun. And I just really want to encourage you to give map drawing a shot. I still get comments on these videos with people saying they they don't know how to draw, they can't draw, and I'm gonna be kind of tough here. I don't, I don't wanna hear any of those comments on this video. When people write that stuff, I literally don't believe them. I, I'm really serious when I say, if you can write the alphabet, you can make maps like this. In this map, I'm not worried about all of the stuff that makes drawing complicated or difficult. I'm not worried about shading. I'm not worried about line weight. There's no perspective to worry about. And because this is a map, the composition is already figured out. I just wanna be really, really clear here. You can absolutely make a map like this if you just spend a little bit of time preparing at the beginning like I did, and then have a little bit of patience filling in all of these icons. By the end of the process, you're gonna be blown away with what you can create. And the amazing thing about these maps is that it's a really simple drawing that can spark so much imagination. If you show your map to your friends, they're gonna wanna explore it. They're gonna look at the details and, and say, what's going on up here in this fort? Or, oh, I wanna go explore this dungeon in the desert. It's just a really, really rewarding, creative, fun experience, and I hope you give it a try. Okay, now I'm just erasing some of my initial pencil drawings, and then I'm going to outline the coast with the thinner Posca marker, just a thinner line separated from the thicker coastline to sort of show that there are like waves hitting the, the coast or whatever. I'm also gonna add in a really, really simple compass rose. Of course, like any of the elements on this map, you can get more detailed and involved with the drawing, and even though this compass rose is really, really not hard to draw. I think it looks really good and fits in with the style of the rest of the map. Okay, now it's time to add in some waves. I just, I just love drawing waves. The little swoopy squiggles. It's actually kind of hard for me to not add in too many waves. Sometimes I just want to get totally lost in the drawing and fill up the entire ocean with these wave squiggles. But because the landmass of this map is so filled with icons and, and different terrain types. I'm gonna leave the oceans and the, the water parts of the map with a little more negative space and, and not fill it in with so many icons. The last thing I'm doing is going in and thickening up the river and lake lines. I, I thought that they didn't stand out too much. So I am just kind of going over the river lines and making them like doubly as wide, but not as thick as the, the continent outlines, just so they stand out a little bit more. And like I said, get that separation between land and water really defined. Okay, that's it. These are the divided lands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I could probably think of a better name. If you can think of a better name, leave it in the comments for me. This was a really fun diversion for all the time I've been spending on the computer. I've been making a new tabletop adventure over on my Patreon. It's inspired by the original 
Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and Zelda games. Everything's like 8-bit pixel artwork. Lots of fun monster encounters and treasure, and there's an evil wizard in that story. The first of three issues is out on my Patreon. You can go sign up, get the first issue right away. If you sign up this month, you'll get the second issue, and then next month will be the third issue. I'm having a lot of fun making this. It's called Astralin Odyssey, by the way. If you'd like to support the channel and get a bunch of great adventures, not just Astralin Odyssey, but a bunch of other ones, guidebooks on drawing maps, and dungeons, and all kinds of fun stuff, definitely check out my Patreon. That's it for this one. Let me know what you think of this big old map down in the comments. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!